Alright guys, today we're going to be doing another fish tank review. Yeah, I don't know what I'm trying to do. Just trying to be a cool European boy, I guess. Or was that Australian? I just want to have an accent. <laughs> that was supposed to be my, my southern Texas... My southern Texas accent. <laughs> Let me stop before all my subscribers leave. My girlfriend said I'm absolutely horrible with accents. Except for my Vietnamese and mainland Chinese accent, but maybe I'll show you guys another day. Just a disclaimer, there's no spoilers in here whatsoever. But if you haven't watched Endgame, you should really go watch it. It's pretty awesome. Obviously, I'm gonna review it. Disney, you're like a multi-billionaire company. A multi-trillionaire company by now, I think. You can't get a fish tank right. I mean, it does look sizable. It looks pretty big. Um, I think there's goldfish in there, single tail goldfish. It doesn't look overcrowded. Why you gotta have the new tank syndrome? Why can't you like wait until it cycles properly? You were so focused with the cast and the script and all the filming, the action scene that you forgot. The background. You hired these great actors, but you forgot to hire a competent aquarium technician. I mean, I didn't know we were needed in movies, but apparently we, we are. I mean, I guess I feel pretty bad for the aquarium technician in charge of that aquarium. The director's like, yeah, we're, we're good to film, but why does the aquarium look so dirty? Can you just, you know, change out the water? I mean, we all know that's not how you do it. People who never kept fish probably think that's how you do it, just change the water. I could only imagine the frustration of the cram technician, like, you told me yesterday to set this up. I can't, I, that's, no. Hope you didn't get fired. Just goes to show that, you know, nature doesn't care about your feelings or your films. Then bacteria bloom is gonna bloom whether you like it or not. Before you save all those citizens, friendly neighborhood Spider-Man, you might want to save this fish tank. We're gonna do a two out of five. Now, one of my viewers with the username Fluff sent me this uh, email with this tank from his friend and they typed up the conversation. So it went like this, me, which is, you know, Fluff. I mean, that tank is way too small, them. It's fine, they're just a beta fish. They're really cheap, me. It's not fine to me, them. It's okay, it isn't your fish. Yikes, big attitude. Me, yeah, but it's still a fish. I just hope it's not in a coffee cup forever. Them, are you vegan or something? What does that have to... I... Ugh. Me, no, I house fish and try to treat them as best as I can. Them, if you aren't vegan and aren't opposed to eating meat and the cruelty associated with the cultivation of livestock in this country, then fish aren't at the top of the issue list, to be honest. Just because there's livestock being cultivated in the country doesn't mean you get to abuse fish. I don't really see the connection now. Anyway, thanks for sending this in, Fluff, and thanks for being like able to stand up to whoever this person is for you. I think I might not even be able to do that. It's easy for us to say, wow, if I saw that tank, I would be angry at that person. But if that person's like one of our close friends, it's really hard to do that. So really good on you, Fluff. Now, Edward Kenway sent this tank in. This is reminiscent of what a patch of Valisneria would look like in the wild. It doesn't care which side is the front of the tank. It's just gonna grow everywhere. Finished with some litter of wood. This is a perfect overgrown tank for me. Four out of five, great job. Ian Van Dyke, pretty artificial all throughout, except for maybe a couple of half moss balls here and there. And actually, I'm not sure if those are live plants. They actually might be live plants. A small school of neon tetras, so the tank is not overstocked at all. Give me my classic three out of five for artificial tanks. Next, we have a tank sent in by James Chapman. This is a nice little six gallon fluval edge. I like the hardscape. The colors really match each other. There's a tint of red to everything. Then we got the white substrate laid out across the middle. We got some carpeting plants and we got some crypts so like Wigia, Java fern, and some other plants. And this German blue ram is spoiled nuts. The whole tank to itself. And I guess the snail as well. I'm just a little bit concerned that the substrate is inert and there's no fertilizer or any nutrients in it. If you have rooting plants, it's very important to actually have some nutrients in the substrate. Since it's already set up like this, I don't suggest dirting it. Definitely root tabs would be the better option. Four out of five, great job. Very interesting aquascape here, sent to me by John Austin. Sparsely vegetated plants that, you know, has the potential of filling out the tank a little better. It does have a nutritious substrate going on in the bottom. Some floaters on top, classic. But in my opinion, it might have been better if there's a little bit more texture to that piece of wood. Would have been really nice if it branched out a little more instead of just looking like one singular stick. 3.75 for now, probably going to improve later. Good job. Here we have Megan Overman's tank. 
Right away I'm struck by the use of the moss balls, but I very rarely see this carpeting technique being used and I think it's very innovative. Pretty much all the plants in here are low tech and the uh, that might be fluvostratum for a substrate or some other nutritious substrate, which is nice. I do also like the hardscape. It's got that uh, sort of like golden ratio going on. 4.25 out of 5. Great job. Now this is Nick from New Zealand. Um, interesting story here. He wanted, you know, all natural tank, but his partner wanted some artificial. So they met like in the middle some sunken like artificial pieces of uh, a ship together um, but then he planted all over them so it's like best of both worlds I guess this little artificial Groot looking uh, sculpture here Nick pulled it out before his partner could even notice I hope his partner doesn't notice it because of this video good luck Nick I just want to take it and just throw it away of course take the fish out before you do that this tank is sent to me by Reagan P now this is a smaller three gallon nano tank. Regan's concerned that this might be too overgrown, but but in my opinion, if you're gonna you know stock the three gallon with fish, you might as well leave it overgrown because number one, it looks great. And number two, live plants being overgrown, they provide more oxygen. Four out of five, good job. Okay, let me try to get three tanks out of the way with one yikes. Yikes. Uh-huh. It's always about the aesthetic, never the fish. That is so true. Yeah, great, that looks good on Instagram, but like, what about the fish? What about the health of the fish, man? It should be first. I'm gonna have to go with a zero out of five. Oof, even in Minecraft, it's too small. But actually, I think um, this is not official Minecraft. It's definitely a plugin. So Mojang and like the devs are not under fire for this. But whoever made the plugin, like, come on, how are you gonna allow a goldfish to be in such a small tank, man? That's like encouraging kids to do the same in real life, thinking that it's okay. I mean, it's Minecraft and this is what you want to be doing, right? So you, you got um, my fluval spec over here and then you got my ADA uh, rimless. Oh, there's my little parakeet or lorikeet, whatever that is. This is, you know, 10,000 gallons. I got some wild caught sockeye salmon in there. Spawning colors. Yup, yup. Kind of planted, you know, it's cold water, fresh water, uh, minimum plants in their natural habitat. Oh, and there's my cockatiel. And yeah, that's my fluval spec. 3,000 gallons, I'm not sure. <laughs> if you haven't noticed, um, I'm, you know, living vicariously through the uh, whole Minecraft experience because I can't have nearly as big of a tank in real life. And as you can see here, I have like lily pads that I can chill on and look at the fish from up top. I got some, you know, endlers, of course, neon tetras, a few platies here and there. And for plants, I have Ludwigia, I have some Valisneria, some Crips in the front, nothing too fancy. The floaters really um, suck in the nutrients so that there's really no algae growth. I'm just kidding, guys. I have no idea what these plants would be <laughs> in real life. They're not named any of that nor the fish what are you doing here cockatiel just decided to chill on a lily pad oh oh goodness one of, one of the fish flew out how did this happen okay i got him in a bucket wait can i not put him in the fish tank i just dropped the bucket with the fish in it i think it's trapped in the bucket forever press f to pay respects and then we have this my son's minecraft aquarium i count like 20 salmon and six puffers oh there's a dolphin in there you thought that the avengers had the best crossovers you haven't seen this wow we got single tailed goldfish double tailed goldfish parrot cichlid uh piranha errors oscars all right we got freshwater tropical water passive fish aggressive fish this is like if superman fought against thor and then like batman fought against wolverine actually i would really want to see that please make that happen oh and also this okay i was going to review this tank um which has like all these things in it like a cor two quarries one hatchet fish tetra pea puffers apple snails goldfish glass cats red tail sharks but before i reviewed it or you know there's no actual picture for me to review this guy mitchell rowley did all the work for me let's see if i can read this fast enough albino quarries need a big school hatchet fish need a big school and a lid otherwise they will jump out the tetras it's need a school tank. six it will attack up. anything especially goldfish those a big school and bigger tank goldfish need so he needs 40 gallons for water for himself the minimum bro this is tank. absolutely fish abuse and you should be banned from keeping them damn Hot bars. Mitchell Rowley, thanks for doing my job. Yeah, hope you learned your lesson. Okay, this looks like some infomercial sort of deal for phone cases. 
That's a really old phone. Who uses a phone like that anymore? But apparently it's supposed to float on water and it says floats on water. This is a demo tank and it's very clearly on the bottom of the tank. It's not floating at all. That cell phone is clearly dead. It's not even still floating. Cell phones need 150 gallons minimum, people. Man, that species is terribly messy. They should throw in a sucker fish to keep it clean. Awful, it looks wild caught too, which adds an extra 200 gallons. Dick Smith really is a dick for putting such a rare and exotic species that experienced fish keepers only dream of in a 20 gallon. Reddit, you are savage. I don't know what's happening today. These are just so dumb that they're funny. Wait, what? <laughs> Why would you pour water? Where are you going? <laughs> what? Where, what? What is she doing? <laughs> Why would she pour the water onto the thing? I'm dying, someone help, send help. My frat brother's aquarium. We ask him if his bed of fish is okay and he gets defensive and claims he's happy. There's a dead stink bug floating on top. <laughs> I can just imagine this like college dude in denial just like, no, nah, he's happy. He's he's happy. Yeah, he snacks on the stink bug when he wants to. <laughs> it's been three days since I replaced my sister's goldfish with carrots. Oh my god. <laughs> Hardly enough space. <laughs> One second, you a second. <laughs> yeah, that that is a small tank. Everyone knows you shouldn't be putting fish in a small tank like that. Life is not enjoyable for the fish. $40 for what? That thing? $40 for a cup with a dead fish in it. Worth. This tank is brought to us by David Naumov. Got a cute little musk turtle. Got the proper sunbathing ledge over there. Probably UVB light. Some aquarium fish as well. Live plants. Very clean scape. Heater. Everything's going really great for this tank. Since it is a turtle tank, the tank does need to be, you know, more simplified, which is what we see here. So it's really not getting my normal uh, planted tank rating, but I'm still giving it a four just simply because everything's being done right. Always appreciate that. This tank is sent in by Jamie Baker. What an awesome looking tank right off the bat. We got this like island feel to it. I'm not sure if that's all branching off of one piece of wood. If it's not and you glued it together and, you know, just made this amalgamation of branches, good on you. That takes some serious patience and skill. So, and the rocks really match. The java ferns and crypts and other plants poking out really accent the tank and give it a nice finish. We got some floaters as well. We got schooling fish and a betta. Maybe some live bearers here and there and some snails. Overall, a really pleasant tank to look at. 4.25 out of 5. Good job. This tank is sent in by Mr. Perfect. Now, as you probably noticed, this is a fish bowl. You know that I'm against fish bowls, but the thing with fish bowls is you can do it right. You can use it. I know, shocking, right? But whenever you hear fish bowls on my channel, it's always negative because guess what? There's a goldfish or like 10 goldfish in one bowl. So that's the reason why fish bowls are so hated. But when you got live plants, a super planted aquarium like this, and then you got one little balloon molly, even if there's no filter in here, it works. Now this bowl looks very maintained, so the water changes are being kept up as well. Really guys, fish bowls can be very aesthetically pleasing and it really works if you do it properly like this. So you know what, Mr. Perfect? I'm giving you my perfect score, five out of five. For a fish bowl, can you believe Leave that. Now there's a video coming out or coming out sometime, I'm making it sometime, explaining why this works and stuff. But if you are curious, there's a lot of videos already out and I'm sure you can find a lot of information on this if you just Google the matter. Tosh from Germany sent in this beautiful looking tank. Boy, I might give out two fives for one video. I think those are some Ranchu goldfish. If they're not, uh, please don't kill me if you're a goldfish enthusiast. I'm just starting out. We got swords and crypts and, and accuras and plants that are growing immersed. The hardscape it's very interesting. He's got it in the bowls. Of course, this isn't natural, but I tend to like this look. For whatever reason, these bowls are working for me. And there's artwork on the walls, which just completes this whole look. If that wall of immersed plants are not enough for you. The only thing is, I'm just a little nervous about the root system of these plants. They like to branch out into the substrate, but if you have it confined in a bowl, they might not be able to continue growing for a long period of time. So if you see them start dying out, maybe cut back the roots or, you know, give the roots more space to grow. 4.75 out of 5, very close. Some of the comments in the last episode said, like, I had a small mic. Like, why is your mic so small? It's just because I don't need to make up for anything else, you know?
fish tank review. Have you seen those dogs and cats walking around with the leashes and you get jealous and want to walk your fish around town? Well now you can with fish backpack. This aquarium backpack lets you haul around your fish wherever you go. They're not kidding about the haul part. I'm gonna literally haul it. Now I don't know if you know but water is super heavy. <laughs> now just looking at those rocks, those might already be a challenge to haul around. Now add in like two gallons of water and shoulder displacement, spinal injury, um, depression of your hips. For $500 you can kill your fish and also uh, get ready for your chiropractor. And apparently the company says this backpack is self-cleaning. I don't, I don't know what that means. Wow I have never seen a fish tank with that much algae. It's got so much algae it's growing on the fish themselves. Now I don't do saltwater tanks, I don't know too much about it, but I'm pretty sure this is not normal and not what people want. This is at a dentist's office. I mean I know the two things aren't really correlated, but like it'll still leave a bad impression on your patients. Oh this guy left the address of this dentist's office. I'm just gonna leave it here for you guys. It's really bad so like if you're in Sydney go boycott them or something. Eh, they seem to be happy about something. Maybe the fish did it on purpose. I hope you're joking. Those are the worst living conditions I've ever seen. Those poor animals probably have no idea what's going on. Fish aren't smart enough to do something like that anyways. Some dude tried selling me this saying you can easily add more fish. Uh, yeah, I guess the only way you can easily add more fish is literally you open up the tank, drop some fish in. That is pretty easy, but you know, you really shouldn't be adding anything else into that tank except for a net that you use to take out the fish so that they don't keep suffering like this. All right, we got a classic, you know, Mountain Dew sort of thing. It actually looks kind of like spores in this like green space. It actually kind of looks cool, except I, I'm pretty sure this is horrible. In my other video, there was like these algae blooms and I got mixed reviews. Some people said it was bad. Some people said that's what you're supposed to do with goldfish. I'm kind of uh, skeptical about that, so confirm with me in the comments below. Now we got this no filter, no heater tank. It's a very interesting looking tank. There's no substrate. It's probably like 0.01 gallons. Just kidding guys, this is a cute little picture. I think that might be a saltwater puffer. I just hope this fish actually does have a nice tank to go back to. For Instagram, sure. Just try not to take your fish out too much to do this, or at all. Yeah, literally, what the F. You think it wasn't enough to put a goldfish in there? You gotta put a garami? Is this a new high score for things wrong with a single container of fish and water? Why yes, yes it is. I guess it's a contest now. What is happening to humanity? I think my fish died. You think? Henry? Yeah, so you put the fish in this small little container, sealed it airtight, deprived of all oxygen. Have you not seen a single video by Serpa Design where he makes the sealed paludariums? What the hell are you doing putting a fish in there and sealing it off? Really speaks volumes of how smart you are. You got so many books in the back, yet I'm pretty sure you've learned nothing. Yikes, okay. This is the medium size? <laughs> How much smaller can you go from here? There's four goldfish in that tiny ass bowl. It really blows my mind who would buy this. If you want a humidifier, just get a humidifier. Leave the live fish alone. This post actually confuses the crap out of me. <laughs> the owner must have been like, Oh look, a reptile tank. Turtles are reptiles, I'll just buy a Exoterra reptile tank specifically for them, great. Oh no, this reptile tank can't hold that much water and it'll overflow, so let's just use a food bowl and then put that in the bottom, and then put our turtles in the food bowl. Seriously, if this is a permanent enclosure, that owner needs to die. Yep, I'm skipping the whole jail process, you're gonna get executed. This tank was sent in by Dartu Boy. He saw this fish tank lying around in the streets of Japan. This is a bare bone tank, no filter, no heater, no substrate, lights, nothing. Just water and one or two goldfish, I think. Let's just say it's not overstocked, but still, it's outside. And I'm pretty sure temperatures in Japan do fluctuate, especially in winter, depending on where it can drop below zero. And that's a big no-no for goldfish. 
Goldfish. So this is kind of a yikes, but thanks for sending this in, Dartu boy. But super cool name. Sounds like some League of Legends username. Maybe you're even MLG. I'm not sure. Next tank is sent to me by Dave Kwok. Pretty clean look going on. You definitely have a theme here of like, you know, just a smaller shrubby look. I really like the placement of the rocks, the hardscape, and also the color scheme of the whole tank. Now, initially I wanted to say like fill out the back or something, but this is definitely a look, a theme of the tank. Everything is kept small. Anyways, I do enjoy this aquascape. I'm giving it a 4.5 out of 5. Good job. This tank is sent to me by Emil Chung. This is a nice big tank with some rainbows here and there, an angelfish, an assortment of plants. I'm not sure if they're new or you've been trimming them, but I think just let them grow out a little bit more and the tank will look more lush. But of course, I do have a problem here and I think you guys already know. It's this red looking like coke cap sort of thing. I'm not sure exactly what that is. I mean, it might be there to give some refuge to a pleco or something, or it might hold some personal significance to you. So I don't really want to judge, but if it was me, I would replace that with, if you wanted something red in the tank, then I would use just Lotus, Tiger Lotus. 3.75 out of 5. Next tank is from Hugo. He's also got a red piece of artificial thing, almost at the exact same kind of location as the last tank. I kind of enjoy it. Um, you can totally see this fish tank displayed at some Japanese store, and that would be very fitting to put something like that, even though it's artificial, in the tank. And you can see he's already got the additional red from the Tiger Lotus in the middle. Now what's really interesting here is Hugo says he's 14 years old. So if he did this all by himself, 14 years old, man, you are going places. That puts me to shame. 4.75 out of 5. Really good job. This last tank is sent to me by Christy, and she said this was aquascaped by someone called Paul Lau. So uh, good job, Paul. The carpeting plants have not really started to do their work yet, but I think within a few months, it'll be very vibrant. Not exactly sure what's going on in the left upper corner. Might be some immersed grow out situation over there, but the tank itself looks quite lovely. You got so many textures in there, and then the textures broke in by even more textures from the red plants. The colors work very well together. The tank itself is understocked with uh, fauna, so yeah, personal preference, that's awesome. I think, yeah, just give it a few months for it to grow and it'll be just perfect. Right now it's nearing perfect for me, 4.75 out of 5. Great job. And we're buying all the better fish here. I swear to God, this is not set up. I had nothing to do with this. What do you mean you had nothing to do with this? This is your channel. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. To see if we can breed them in this pond. These two breed, I'll be really happy about them. Tickle them right into the net. Two, three, four, five, six. This is gonna be like a freaking benefit Game of Thrones in a second. Did he just say Game of Thrones? Doesn't that mean like bloodbath? Look at that oh, thing. It's cool. Gorgeous. Here's a blue. Ooh, ooh, uh oh, uh oh. Look at the goldfish. Yeah, look with, with the, the long tail, how yeah. beautiful that is. Yeah. Look. You know, like forget about the betta fighting each other. Those koi are big enough to swallow those small little betta fish whole. I did get a comment about this uh, video, this particular video from one of my viewers asking me if I approved. I mean, I'm sure this guy's not looking for anyone's approval. He's making probably like thousands of dollars every month um, doing this kind of stuff. I'm sure he has better videos than this, but whether he cares or not, yeah, I, I don't approve, obviously. My dude. You forgot your kale smoothie in the morning. Tell me that's a blender and not a fish tank. Nope, that's a fish tank. Judging by the food you have, I'm guessing it's a betta fish. This is not just like green water. This is some thick, gunky, green kale smoothie action going on. I can't tell where like the water begins and where the, like this might as well be duckweed because I can't tell if it's duckweed or algae anymore. <laughs> Maybe it really is kale. Maybe he really did mistake this for a blender. Zero out of five. All right, this is from TikTok. What even is TikTok? It's like the new vine or something. <laughs> I sound really old. Yeah, there's a proper way of pulling this off, but unfortunately, this is not it. This looks sketchy as hell, man. <laughs> so you know when you're like at the checkout and you're lined up at Superstore or something and you see all these like stuff that you can get before you check out, like gum and stuff, candy bars. Now imagine there's fish. Just like you decide, oh, let me grab a fish as well, because you know, why not? Now I don't know where this is, but where I live, 
There ain't no fish in thrift stores. Come on. Now, here's here's the dilemma. If you quote unquote rescue those fish, then the store is going to be like, wow, our sales for fish just skyrocketed. Let's get double the stock. So I feel like the best way is for nobody to buy these fish. Sure, there are sacrifices that are made. These fish are going to die, um, but it'll potentially save more fish from dying because the store will be like, no one buys these fish. Let's stop getting it. I like how this caption is just no. That goldfish has seen some things like just living in a cramped space with with her husband, the betta, which just never stops flaring. The wife is like, you're taking all the flakes. And the husband, which is the betta here, he's like, I don't even like these flakes. I much rather want blood worms. Also, whenever you see neon green pebbles in a fish tank, run. Dun, dun, dun. My <laughs> My aunt keeps goldfish in her water collector to eat the mosquitoes. Now, if not, if I'm not mistaken, uh, the water collector has a lid, so maybe when it's not raining, it's closed. But I mean, it's just kind of sad that you just close the lid whenever it's not raining. I don't know, for maybe days, depending on where you live. Now, this is a meme sent in by Dartu Boy. I admire the betta fish because I also am beautiful and want to fight everyone. <laughs> I love it. This tank is sent in by Ahmed Zahid. Now it's a pretty clean looking tank. Wait a couple months later and it's gonna be overgrown and looking real nice. Very, very understocked. I only see like one Harlequin Rasbora. There probably are a little bit more than that, but I'm really liking the clean look. The plants are very vibrant. For now, you're getting a 3.9. Can't wait to see this progress. Next, we have Lice or Liz Nokka, Nocha. Sorry if I butchered that, my bad. What's interesting here is it's their first tank ever. Now, my first tank looked nothing like that. Uh, I think most people's first tanks don't look like anything like this. Did you get help? I'm not doing get help. If you didn't get help, this is very impressive. Uh, you're already running the CO2 system. This is very high tech, full on carpet, and the carpet is thick. I'm talking T-H-I-C-C. -C. This is easily five out of five. And yeah, I'm taking into consideration that this is your first tank. Next tank from Matthias Madrid. I mean, just look at it. Full blown with plants of all species, all textures. Very understocked. This is what I call a planted tank. He's got the pothos in the back, probably in his filter, helping with combating the algae and the nitrates. We'd like to see a bit more carpeting action and a bit more structure, so some hardscape here and there would really, really help. 4.75 out of 5. Keep doing what you're doing. This tank brought to us by Quentin Durand. Now this is the first time I've seen a gold barb species tank that is planted like this with the hardscape that is super lovely. And that's perfect for the barbs, they need a longer tank. I see you also have a Pearl Garami with a tank like this, should be no problem. You got like Giant Vallis, I think, going crazy there. The hardscape is really something I love here. From the rock placement to the plants and then to the uh, leading lines of your wood. Some people might say it's overstocked, but I don't really know what filtration stuff you got going on in the back. You got the live plants and it's a long tank. I don't think I have a problem with this. You are also getting a 5 out of 5. This is why you don't keep koi in tanks. My dude over there looks like he's seen some things. Like his eyes are now just permanently wide. I guess that's true because he's a fish and he doesn't have eyelids. But anyway, look at the size of that fish. It is pretty much half the length of his tank. That fish and all his buddies in there, they need to go in an actual pond. OMG, how can they have those fish in there without a pleco to eat the poo? <laughs> you gotta have that obligatory pleco. Can it even turn? That's why the other fish are there. They help him turn and bring him to the food. That tank isn't even big enough for a betta. What were they thinking? Okay, now these guys are just being trolls. I, I get it, okay. Guys, if you ever see this tank, just, just run the other way. I don't care which way, but the opposite way would be great. If someone asks, like, why are you running? Just just keep running. Don't tell them. Just keep running. These are too small for even shrimp or snails. I don't even want to put anything in there. This guy is putting two betta fish instead of three uh, because probably the middle one died and then they put a skull. Like you can just see how much space these bettas actually have. It's so cramped. Yeah, that's mood. Yuck. I've had birds before. Their feathers fall out all the time. They shed a lot and there's dust. Having your bird take a bath in your fish's water, that 
Just seems really gross. Uh, thank you, next. Hello, my name is Swim Shady. <laughs> this is like if Eminem just gave up on rapping, he'd just be like a little sad fish on the bottom of a small, small Tupperware container with pink gravel. Contrary to the name, this fish is swimming no more. It's lived a tough life. It is now just shady. All right, so uh, more people are realizing this. I called this out like a few FTR episodes ago that like people who spell names of the fish incorrectly also are incorrect in their care. Now this guy's like Gurami and he's being called out. Why is that people who can't keep fish also can't spell the name of the fish right? Bittersweet indeed. Oh, and one random fish. Never heard of that species before. Buying all the fish in Walmart. So uh, you can search this up on YouTube, but I'm not gonna show the video It's basically about this little kid who probably doesn't know any better I'm not gonna like totally blame him for it because obviously his parents let him first of all You never want to buy any fish from Walmart no matter how sickly they look if nobody buys any fish from Walmart I guarantee you they'll stop selling because they're looking at their analytics, right? And this guy buying all the fish from Walmart just told Walmart that wow, uh, you're Fish sales skyrocketed. Let's let's go ham on getting more fish and then stocking the whole store with it again. So basically you just doubled the amount of fish that are going to die. Secondly, what this guy did is he took all these fish back home and he didn't have tanks for it. He just had little containers here and there. This is why if you really want to, uh, you know, do something good and rescue the fish, you gotta let them die so that the store doesn't think they are selling fish and they should stock more. Yeah, so get the word out there to everyone. Stop buying fish from places that you don't like. We got this tank sent in from Jester's Aquariums. What a beautiful little tank here. Awesome carpeting skills and got the cholo wood over there. Some bigger plants in the background. Very understocked. There's a little heater there, filter, and then some of the lucky bamboo in the filter. Helping out with the excess nitrates. This is such a cute little tank. The water is super clear. Everything's being done right. Maybe just a bit more plants covering the background. And also consider some centerpiece uh, hardscape such as a a nice piece of rock or driftwood. Awesome tank though, 4.65, great job. This next tank sent in by Rakith. Oh, you got, you got that, you got that Endler right there. <laughs> That's not fair, man. I'm biased towards Endlers. I see it, I, it's right there, just one though. But no, I really do like the hardscape. You got some uh, river rock and you got that like a stumpy looking driftwood with some of the leading lines. That really works out. I like the placement of it. Some big plants here and there, some little plants in the middle of the rocks and that's a really accurate depiction of a river setting. Now I think those are Serpia tetras. That's a glowfish, um, some kind of Daniel. Not a super big fan of those fish, but overall I'd say this is a pretty solid scape. 4.5 out of 5. Good job. A little bit of the same theme going on here by Wyatt Allen. A little more lush with the plants. I think they're going to fill out even more as time goes on and this is also kind of like a river theme. There's some bigger rocks scattered around. There's a little path. I really like the way you've uh, taken some different sized gravel to create more depth. I like that it's really understocked and it's just got two uh, dwarf Grammys. They do look pretty happy and this is a very calm, soothing tank to look at. 4.5, very good job. Checking one, two, three. Yo, what's up? We're back with an FTR, back at it again. Dude, these guys, I don't know what they were thinking. They put a catfish in a cardboard box I think that's rice. It's got a rice bowl. Is that an oxalato? Nope, it's a catfish. Like they're pretty darn hardy fish, but not if you treat it like a reptile. Maybe they thought it was a newt, maybe a salamander. Still, who keeps a salamander in a cardboard box and feeds it rice? I really hope these guys are just pulling a prank on social media. This is beyond bad. <laughs> what? Whoa, <laughs> dang, it just jumped straight out of there. What the hell? I don't know what that was and why the camera was filming at that very specific moment. That tank was way too crowded. Let me just jump the hell out of here. Just, <laughs> maybe that was the catfish. Oh. <laughs> they will not fight because they're female and male, not male and male. Oh no. Okay, then if you say so, you're changing the way of biology and science and did you do any research at all before getting these fish? No, because 
you make your own reality, I guess. Very philosophical. That's a really crowded tank, man. I like how one fish at the end is just like, send help, send help. Get me the F out of here. Next up, we have this beta picture frame. Uh, it took me uh, <laughs> longer than I wanted to to get what the heck is going on here. I thought it was just like something you can get at Best Buy. I realized that it's a fish tank. It's a 0.75 gallon fish tank. So as you can see here, you can put uh, a picture in the back and it'll keep it dry. It's basically like the uh, wallpaper or backdrop of the tank. And then you can just plop your beta into this hell hole. Honestly, I'm not gonna lie, if it was like a five gallon and it could hold a bigger picture, might even look better, then, you know, five gallon tank for a beta, no problem. Why you gotta mess it up and put it in a 0.75 gallon? Who came up with the 0.75? Is it because that's like the typical uh, portrait for picture sizes that they print? Maybe. But that don't work for a beta. That's like so small. The beta's gonna hate whoever you put into the uh, <laughs> into the frame. Just trapped in this little piece of garbage tank, if you can call it a tank, and just looking into like your daughter's eyes, those mocking eyes of death. Wow, another family friendly fun, my fun fish cleaning tank. My fun fish cleaning tank. Does the tank clean your fish? That's like bad grammar as well. The aquarium that cleans itself, just add water. L'aquarium qui se nettoie tout seul. I, I did do some French, but uh, it's not it's not that great. I think in my class of French immersion, I was the worst at pronunciation. Anyway, first up, they look too happy. Like nobody looks that happy, get out of here. Secondly, does anyone have any explanation on what the heck is going on here? How do you clean yourself? How does the... <laughs> Wait, how does the tank clean itself, okay? These are stray claims. Does it scrub the algae? Clean itself of what? Doesn't even look like it has a filter. So no, it's not cleaning itself more than the usual, the normal tank that has filters. Cause at least the beneficial bacteria gets rid of the uh, nitrites and turns it into nitrate. What the heck is going on here? I'm so confused. Same dude, same. Heaps of fish for sale. About 30, if not, more. Need Gorn ASAP. <laughs> Need Gorn ASAP. <laughs> what does that mean? $250. For what? <laughs> it doesn't say for what. And that doesn't look like heaps of fish. But seriously, what is Gorn? Need Gorn ASAP. Let me, let me replace the G. Need, <laughs> not that one. Need Corn ASAP. Nope. Uh, need, what else? Torn? Uh, there's literally no other word. Watch it be like some obvious word that I'm not getting. That's gonna be pretty sad. Please no. Papa John's, how may I help you? Hey yo, Papa John's, let me get that Craigslist special. And is that with extra pepper algae? You betcha. Big yikes, what is that? <laughs> yo man, I just got the new vertical rimless from ADA. Oh dude, that sounds so cool. Let me take a look. Oh no. Our first subscriber submission is sent in by Ashley. This is a 75 gallon tank and although it doesn't have substrate, it's got this cool looking wooden bottom here. Now I never thought this was possible, but I actually like this tank even though it doesn't have actual substrate. So look at how clean it is. I think it's due to the fact that these uh, strategically placed, aesthetically pleasing pieces of uh, ornaments and hardscapes catch my eye. The lighting helps as well, the green plants, the wood piece that's stacked on top of each other. It's just all about the aesthetics here and uh, you did need any substrate to make it better. Very impressive, very different, I love it. Pioneering in Aquascape 101. And for the creativity, or you know, <laughs> perhaps it was laziness or you know, on a budget, but it definitely worked and you made it work to your advantage. It's not gonna get the five out of five because I'm still a little unsure about it, but I'm totally giving it a 4.5 out of five. Very good job. Oh, and plus here's her cute little uh, Dorf Garami. Next up, we got Leon from Germany. Germany. Now Leon says he is a beginner and again where are y'all beginners coming from that are able to do this stuff like I mean come on like he's just destroying people like me. This is an awesome looking nano cube. Very good job Leon. I'm pretty sure this beginner did 
so much research and prep time and looked up a lot of videos and made sure everything was done properly. This is the best way to do it. And you waste less money doing this as well because it has a less chance of failure. He knows better not to uh, overstock this tank. So some cherry shrimps will do for the fauna. And you really don't need that much fauna in here anyway because the plants and that piece of wood is the focal point of this amazing tank. Another solid 4.5 out of 5. Great job. Next we got another beginner, Selena Lowe. Now this tank, she says, has helped her uh, mentally and emotionally just looking at it and being able to uh, set it up and maintain it and take care of it. Also the beta probably helps as well. I totally understand. I sit by my 40 gallon a lot and also my other tanks. Just doing whatever, reading and going on to my phone and responding to comments. It really helps relax the mind and the body after a hard day at work or whatever we're doing. The Anubias is nice and healthy. There's a big uh, sword in the back in the corner. The beta looks really cute, really healthy and happy. I love the floaters up top. I think uh, there's some, I'm not sure. Probably water spread and frog bit is my best guess. Now, if it makes you happy, you don't have to change anything at all. Because at the end of the day, it's what personally makes our specific selves happy that counts. Four out of five, great job. This next tank sent in by Talha Aslam. First, the rocks caught my eye. I love it. Um, these rocks, I think I like it better than Lava Rock. I like the color of it much better. Scattered over the place and stacked a little bit. Perfect. And then the backdrop. I normally don't like backdrops at all, but this one kind of does help a little bit with the uh, overall tank. It's not the most natural. It looks a little bit out of place, but I mean, it could work, you know, for the undiscerning eye. The life plants are in there. There's some, uh, I think it's Kabamba wedged between the rocks. Pretty happy life bearers all around. Four out of five. Keep doing what you're doing. This guy, you guys have been sending me this guy like crazy. I didn't know who he is. I still don't really know who he is. I know he's not one of those like catch them all fishing or anything really related to fish keeping, except uh, his viewers and people who view my channel, they, uh, they caught him with that fish tank over there that beta fish tank and then the caption of or like the responses of most people who are sending him um, and this screenshot to me is he's got a 2.5 million dollar house but he can only afford a tiny little bowl which i imagine can't cost him more than a quarter okay that's a nice beautiful looking beta and uh i mean even aesthetically the bowl doesn't do it justice and it's it, it looks really really small some people are saying he has seven million dollars and that's how he keeps fish now i don't really know how much money he has but regardless of how much money you have if you are going to buy a pet you should be able to you know budget for the proper care and more importantly find out what kind of budget it is that's required for proper caring and i feel like he shouldn't get all of the blame it's just a unfortunate scenario because how do you how do you say his name david Dob dobrik david debrik let's just call him dado okay dado here is not you know making the best impression on his kids uh which are primarily probably i don't know 8 to 12 years old just a guess i'm pretty sure all of his underage fans think that he is super cool and maybe he is haven't watched his content again and seeing him put a beta in that bowl, I think beta bowl market is gonna skyrocket, you know? Every kid is gonna ask their parents for a beta and they're like, this is how you can keep a beta, just in a bowl, like Dado over here. <laughs> Saw this on Twitter and almost vomited. Oh no, should I get my barf bucket ready? There's an axolotl in there. Oh, yes there is. Now, for those of you who are like, no it's not, there's no axolotl in there. I uh, managed to find another picture somehow of the same uh, tank but in a different uh, perspective and surely there it is. It's a baby axolotl so hopefully it's not permanent at all and but even saying that there's no filter in here and we all know how stingy axolotls can be with water parameters. Gotta have that filter. Very very important. And with a small tank like this you're just letting the nitrates build up very quickly. Also can I just say what's up with the unicorn, pink unicorn, rhinoceros looking thing, and why is it on a washing machine? Why do you have an axolotl in this situation? I feel like this is a world's first. There's no other place, no other picture with this specific setup for an axolotl tank. How do you feed it? 
you put the fish food into the stuffed animal's mouth. There's an opening that lets it fall into the bowl. This sounds ridiculous, but I swear this is how it is. No sarcasm here. Can confirm it goes through the mouth. Little bro has one and feeds it pennies. <laughs> what? <laughs> feeds it pennies? <laughs> this just gets more and more ridiculous. Really, I wonder how fast an axolotl dies with pennies in, in the water, just leaching the copper. 0 0.25 gallon tank for a beta. What's with 0.25? I don't know, this video is just cursed with that number. A beta wouldn't even be able to turn around in this. Got that right. Caption of the video or picture or whatever, it says, I know I should put it in there. Correct again, this is as big as this tank is. Come again? <laughs> Okay, so I, I've read that a few times over. I'm gonna save you guys the trouble of reading it. It doesn't make sense, okay? I know in the last FTR, I'm like, need Gorn ASAP? What does that mean? And you guys were like, obviously it's gone, you idiot. And I'm like, oh, okay, darn it, that's my fault. But someone correct me here, what the hell is that? I know I should put it in there correct again. This is as big as this tank is. I'm a little scared that it's really obvious what he's trying to mean, and I don't understand it. Anyways, horrible tank. Disregard this tank. Pretend it doesn't exist. OP sells these pre-designed aquariums for ADFs, which are uh, African dwarf frogs. This darling human is going to be a fabulous froggy pet owner. They are so simple to care for, making awesome first pets. Life science at its best. Yeah, this one's very weird. I scroll down to the comments, it says something like, it's very weird because you can tell that this person, whoever's selling these pre-designed aquariums, they really like like African dwarf frogs and they have a passion for them. But there's, there seems to be a cutoff between like the understanding of their care and how much that person likes it. In this case, not enough research was done by the person who's designing these aquariums. I don't even think he's trying to make that much money off of it. I think he's just, you know, lacking some experience taking care of them properly. To me, this is an unfortunate loss because uh, it could end up really well. If he's super passionate and he did the research, he would be able to teach all these young kids how to properly take care of fish. And of course, the African dwarf frog. They definitely need filters. They need tanks that are bigger than that. And I mean, aesthetically, <laughs> horrendous color of substrate. My tanks burst. Oh man, I feel for you, dude. Sorry about that. Guess I have a tub full of fish now. That's actually a very good idea. I mean, when your tank bursts, it's usually at some time that you have no idea what's gonna do that. It's always taken by surprise. And this was definitely a fast action. I can see that most of your fish did survive the move to your tub. Also, you know, you can't take a shower or bath anymore, so that's very sacrificial of you. You got the heater in there, got the filter going. Hey man, all the best of luck to you. Hopefully it has recovered. And yeah, this is a great example of how we need to move fast and be on our feet if some sort of accident like this were to happen. I feel physically sick just looking at this. Yeah, me too. This is like a puzzle piece. Like that's how tightly everything is like fitted into this tank. Each fish has like just enough space to exist in that tank. I don't know much about keeping fish, but this seems very wrong. Yes, it is very, very wrong. My mother came home the other day from the dollar store and she was excited to give me this container. She was like, hey, I can give you this container. And I'm like, for what? And then she said, to keep your fish or something if you know an accident happens or to keep it in here if you're changing water or something. Now she doesn't know that much about you know the fish tank hobby and that's fine. But even she did not say like, you can put fish in here and keep fish in here um, you know, permanently. She understood that that was way too small for any sort of fish that I was keeping. That's why I think it is still pretty much common sense that you can't keep three gold, like those goldfish are not done growing, okay? Really? You make cutting edge aquariums and think this is a good idea? Betta Bowl by Zero Edge Aquarium. The Zero Edge Betta Bowl was designed with kids in mind, offering them a colorful home for their betta fish. The hardest part is to pick your favorite color. That's the hardest part? To pick your favorite color? I feel like the hardest part is to keep your fish alive. Actually, my personal hardest part about this is looking at the thing. 
How about you don't pick one of those? That'll make for a pretty nice beginner like rimless plastic tank for your kid. And then buy all the live plants and natural looking substrate. Teach your kid a thing or two about keeping live animals instead of doing this weird design thing that doesn't really work. Look how much real estate you're taking from the fish by putting that thing in there. That's ridiculous. $59.95, my Asian is kicking in overdrive. Don't buy it. Save your money for dim sum, dude. Now we can't have a video without getting our daily kale smoothies. And of course, this guy has it down for us. Four fishies live in here. Oh yeah? I count six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Hopefully that's the f that's all the fishies are talking about. <laughs> Aqua Town, more like zero out of five town. All right, our first tank submission is from Brody M. This is pretty interesting because Brody sent me three pictures of the same tank, and they are basically the evolution of his tank. So it started off looking like this, which is, you know, not the worst, but eh, not the best, of course. And this is already looking very wonderful. This is his second version. He's got a little carpeting action going on. He's got brighter lights, more plants. His fish look vibrant. And the third and final one, he's got some tiger lotus in there, some Ludwigia repens, kabamba going on, some interesting fish in there. The plants have grown more lush, taller. So from this to this, very impressive. Just a little question for you, um, are all of the cichlids in your tank getting along? Because I see there's probably a breeding pair of German blue rams, and then there's a crebensis in there, probably a male, so... A little bit uh, feisty I would think. I hope there's not a breeding pair of the crebenses as well. And there's angelfish in there. And those barbs are actually pretty sizable as well. So let me know, are there like, you know, aggressiveness happening in your tank and did you have to move them around? Anyway, you're getting a 4.1 from me. Great job. This next tank, it's from Clara Metz. This is a cozy looking tank. I'm not really sure what kind of plants are in here, but they are green and vibrant and big. I like when the plants are oversized for his tank because it gives it a look that, you know, it is a little spot of nature that you've captured in your aquarium. The accented pebbles uh, contrasting with the black substrate, pretty nice touch. And the skull, even though I don't like artificial decorations, it kind of work here as well. The dark substrate uh, adding to the theme of this skull. It's a nice little cozy tank and I can't wait to see what you have in mind to stock it with. And we have matching thermometers. I have one exactly like that, the magnetic kind. 4.25 out of 5, great job. Oh yeah, and I like the wood with the moss on it. This one's sent in by Element Tech. Very interesting. Um, the plants are obviously fake, unless there's this awesome plant that is real that I don't know about, but really that looks like silk, silk plants. So <laughs> let me know if it's real though. Let me know where I can get some, but I'm pretty sure it's fake. I'm just tripping right now. I think there are some real plants, maybe over there on the wood, but for the most part, fake plants. Of course, Marimo moss balls are, you know, technically real plants. So Dwarf Flame Grammys, Reminos Tetras, and Black Neons. Pretty nice stocking choice. Again, the black substrate with some uh, contrasting bigger rocks. I really like that kind of look. I think it's a smart aquascaping choice. I would definitely fill out the back a little more and also opt out for real plants. But, you know, if you don't have the time and resources for real plants, this is pretty nice. 3.9 out of 5, great job. This next tank is from Kazuki Misaki. Now, they did not give me a full-on like picture of the whole tank, maybe because the tank is really big and they don't have like the angle to get a full wide angle picture. But yeah, anyways, this tank, lots of guppies, lots of angelfish, lots of little albino quarries running around. I see some water wisteria. I see a lot of kabamba just taking off, taking over the tank as they should. And then there's also water lettuce, which is super cool. It's probably my favorite floater along with frogbit. And I really like how the roots look. I really like how they look immersed. Also the hardscape is one to look at as well. It looks really nice, but I do wish I got a full picture of this so I can actually, you know, judge the overall aquascape, but it really looks like you are doing a very good job. 4.4 out of 5. Keep up the good work. The next tank is from Javier Yip. Now this tank hits the spot for me. It's kind of weird, um, but it really hits the spot because, let me explain, it really looks like to me um, just a scrap of fallen wood or fallen twigs that have gathered and have naturally dammed in a river, and then there's like uh, these plants growing out of it, right? And that's exactly what this looks like. It's like a river that's being naturally dammed by falling debris from surrounding forest into the stream, washed downwards, 
This is really simple and this is、uh, not the typical skate that people usually go for these days, but it's getting my 5 out of 5. Great job, Javier. Next tank is from Thomas de Beauvoir. Sorry if I butchered that name. It's French, and my French pronunciation is not great. But what is great is this tank. I think it's got some simple plans like Water Wisteria that's taken off, but that's great if you know, you can use simple plans and you, you can just, you don't need the super high tech、uh, plans that no one's ever heard of to manipulate it in a way where it can work very well in your tank and create a very beautiful aquascape, which is what you have done here. The background is black and it creates this very clean, cinematic almost look to the tank, and that's something I really appreciate. The lighting is on. Point. It's、uh, centerpiece focused,、um, and you have great centerpiece、uh, fish as the choice. Those two angelfish, maybe three angelfish. I can't really make out what that fish is, and there might be other fish in here as well. It's getting my 4.75. And then we have another Thomas, Thomas de Maria. Nice little simple tank here. You got the wood with some moss attached to it, and you got a decorative piece that's not very natural. I think it's, it's probably plastic, it's not real.、Uh, Rock. Correct me if I'm wrong though. There is a bit of algae, I think, growing on the substrate because I don't think that's the natural, like, off green looking color. You haven't stocked it yet, so I want to see, like, what kind of stocking choices you've made. Maybe you got some Amano shrimp going on, cleaning up all that algae. And I think just a simple gravel vac will also do some of the work. Would really like to see a lot of more live plants here and there. Overall, 3.3 out of 5. Keep it up, man. What's up, guys? It's time for another fish tank review. I'm joined today by none other than Rapashi over here. If you haven't Notice yet, there's a crested gecko on my shoulder. Whoa, she always likes to hang out here and try to jump towards that tank there, which I haven't revealed yet, but it's coming very soon. Thank you guys for being so supportive on the name. Well, most of you on the name. But all of you really liked my decision on getting Rapashi. All of you do seem to like that I got a crested gecko. Anyways, before we get into it, we're going for the contest、uh, that whoever guessed right gets a shout out on what I had in this enclosure. A lot of great guesses. Some of you thought because there's no light, it must be some amphibian like a frog. So, yeah, it was kind of a tricky thing.、Oh. So, we have Eli Crockett who said crested gecko. Yep, you got it. Ethan's Exotics. Asks a crested gecko. Yep, you are right. And awesome name, Ethan's Exotics. Layla Mori also guessed it. Crested gecko is in the tank. Yep, very matter of fact. You know it. Robe player coming in clutch. Vertical tank is a gecko. Didn't guess crested gecko, but he was so fast and on the mark. And last but not least, not everyone is a spelling master, okay? And I gotta give it to this guy,、uh, Wild Will. In the vertical tank is a crusted gecko. I hope my gecko never becomes crusted. Uh, it's a crested gecko, but I totally know what you meant, and I probably will make the same typo mistake in the future. Very good job, guys, and again, awesome guesses. I wish I had all of those reptiles and amphibians, like the white tree frog or the、uh, chameleon. I really wish I had those. Saw this while scrolling through images. Oof. Yeah, big oof.、Um, I saw this while I was scrolling images too, so it's like scrolling section. Fishbowls are notorious to be goldfish killers, you know? You put your Ryukin in there and it's gonna die in like two weeks when it can live for many, many years. But, like, what is this, a damselfish? I haven't caught up on my saltwater at all, but I just feel like this is another level because saltwater fish all require so many pieces of equipment, like the I don't know, sump and the protein skimmer, really good filters. Pretty sure even the lights are important. And this guy's just like, F all that. I want salt water and I just want to put it in a bowl. I don't even know if that water is salt water. Also, I don't know if the person knows this is a salt water fish. Maybe they just thought it's a goldfish. It's kind of yellow, so kind of gold. And it's a fish, so to the inexperienced person, goldfish. I really hope this isn't the case. And whoever sold this person the fish, they got a double check, man. Not only is it in a bowl, it's hitting all the worst like, parts of the hobby. You got the plastic plants, and you just got the gravel from hell. Like, what is that color scheme even? The only thing we can bank on is that this thing is just for like, Instagram, and the fish is going right back to its like, 125 gallon. Or maybe it's Photoshop. So excited to see this posted at my local Walmart. Attention, Walmart customers. The text is pretty small to read, but I saw the captions or I saw the comments, and it's basically saying the fish department is gonna be closed down for good at Walmart. A lot of you did already say this in the other FTR, and 
awesome this thing is happening. Wait, but then also I see this comment. Wait a minute, my local Walmart said they were upscaling their fish department. Like they said they were making it bigger. What the F? That's where all the fish went from this picture. No, please no. Okay, this third comment clarifies it. So it's, no, 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 it's supposed to be taken out, not being expanded. Collection of pet merchandise coming soon. So this is probably a misunderstanding. Pet merchandise probably does not mean live pets, which means no more live fish. This is not going to be a expansion of the live fish department. Instead, they're going to replace it with pet merchandise, like maybe things for fish, like fish tanks, other products like food, fluval. So, okay, I think, I think we're probably all good. It's all just misunderstanding. Fish department, live fish department, no more. Congratulations, humanity. One more step to being better. Big man, little box. <laughs> what? You got a giant Oscar, full grown, almost, I think. And then you got like six little goldfish that is too big for the Oscar to eat, but probably not too big to maim. And they're all just begging for their lives. Like they actually know that this Oscar is going to destroy them. Oh my gosh, dude. Oh my gosh. Let us, let us out. Come on, let us out. Gulp, gulp. I don't know what fish say. Just gulp. <laughs> Pretty horrible. Yes, those are actual bettas at a pet store. I know it's temporary, but it's still sad. Sad indeed. Hey there, happy 4th of July. Wanna kill some fish? I don't know, is my southern accent improving? Probably not southern USA. It could be, but it doesn't have to be. Like, a lot of other places would probably do this as well. But yeah, happy 4th of July. Hopefully you didn't buy one of those. Pretty sure that Pleco doesn't belong in a 3.5 gallon tank. I saw a comment on the bottom and it said they had a Pleco that had the fish the same size of this tank. I don't know how feasible that was, but I like the hyperbole, you know? It creates an effect like, this tank is way too small. I like how there's the review for this product from the guy who got it. That's just a picture. I'm very pleased so far. I just received it and set it up. It worked beautifully so far. I really want to read the whole thing, but I'm too lazy to go find the whole thing, so this will have to do. This person is very pleased that it can fit their uh, juvenile little pleco for the time being. I just received it and set it up, so probably didn't cycle the tank. Anyway, why were you even talking about cycling the tank? This, this is not gonna work. If you like a pleco enough to make it your only fish in this tank that you brought and set up, why wouldn't you just search on Google Pleco Care? You can find everything in two seconds. It tells you everything. Like that's not even a bristle nose, okay? That's, I don't even think that's a dwarf Pleco. It could be a sailfin, but it might be a common. Huh? Are these like inmates? Inmate fish? These are not convicts. We have convict cichlids for that. We all know that paracichlids love getting tattooed. I actually didn't know. I scrolled down to the comments and one of them said, don't search uh, or don't confirm this on Google because I'm guessing the links on Google will take you to links that actually show them getting tattooed. I didn't do it. Um, I'll take your word for it, but go poor fish. If that's actually some sort of like tattoo process, uh, I don't know. Remember the whole Walmart, no more fish, um, one up for humanity. This is like, like two down. Like we, we went up once and now we're, we just go down twice. So we, we actually went down once because one minus two is negative one. And that's the rating for this picture. It's a negative one out of one billion. Count them up. Sad aquarium photo. I used to care for the aquarium at my former workplace but had to hand over the reins when I left. Someone recently posted a photo with a tank in the background. October 2017, it looked pretty good, yeah, I mean, it doesn't have all life plants, but at least it looked like something. And you got like a, it's probably like Halloween, oh yeah, October, duh. It's got a freaking pumpkin in there. And then April 2019, what the hell happened? Two years isn't that big of a time skip for fish tanks, especially if you don't have live plants. Fake plants and decor don't decay in two years. The only thing that survived was that Asian looking temple and a few rocks, I'm guessing. Like, why did you feel the need to take away the plastic plants that aren't gonna die? Also, the, the substrate changed. Like, how did you even 
take out half of like the other half of the substrate. How's that possible? You scooped it out? Oh man, what even happened? And then to top it all off, I don't know what that is, but oh, oh, I think that's one of those glass cleaners. <laughs> At least someone's still cleaning the glass, I guess. Why is this like most relationships? Like it starts off so well and then two years down the road and you're all comfortable and farting in front of each other. Not from personal experience. I still don't fart in front of my girlfriend and she does, she, she's never gonna fart in front of me. Let's just say that. She's very shy. Would you like a cup of tea? I think I'm making a lot of people's ears bleed. First is my southern accent, that's horrible I think. And now I think my British accent is even worse. Stunning terrarium idea from Pinterest. I feel like Pinterest is just like completely and eternally confused now. All of their targeted ads are targeted like pictures from the things you search, it's just awfully confused. That's neither stunning nor is it anything to do with terrarium. Why is it terrarium? It's goldfish tea. Someone educate me. I keep needing people to explain these pictures to me. I don't get it. What, what does this one mean? Last time there was like a confusing caption. Some people were like, that's the wrong caption. But other people were like actually deciphering it and it, it sounded pretty legit. I think this one takes the cake. Cake by the ocean, ah, uh, get it? Inappropriate. Is this, does this even look good to people who don't keep fish? I don't know because I'm biased. I, uh, why is it so noisy today? Oh well, yeah, because I'm filming during rush hour and I live pretty close to traffic. I imagine that most people do have common sense, right? Okay, I can't say that. But like, wouldn't you just see that and be like, wow, that's really small for a fish. Well, I wonder what's happening here. Uh, no, no, just just people with common sense. Okay. Like if you saw that just randomly on a Instagram when you're just scrolling down, would you stop and like that photo? Let me know. Cause this will be like minus one again for humanity. We're going to like minus two. I don't want to go to minus two. Bad things happen when we go to minus two. Literally the saddest thing I've seen on Pinterest. I can only imagine them trying to shove that poor thing in that little hole. Actually, what? how did you get a plant in there? I guess maybe it's one of those softer plants. It looked like a Nubius at first, but I doubt it is. You can't shove a hard piece of a Nubius in there like that. And the tank itself is just representative of what's coming for this beta. The sad part is I know even in this situation, the beta will try its hardest to live. And by chance, it'll probably even like live for a while enough so that the owners don't second guess their care level because bettas are so committed to holding on to life. Trust me, I know. I mean like, I've, I've never been a beta before. I've kept beta, that's why I know. Don't think I had to explain that one. All right, first, oh gosh. We got antlers in the house, oh no. First tank we got, it's an, okay. I'm too excited right now. I see antlers. Our first fish tank is sent in by Dark Shadow 22 from Yorkshire, England. What's up? How's the weather over there? Probably not that different from Vancouver. <laughs> Anyways, beautiful tank. Nice use of the Kabamba making everything lush. Nice use of the uh, Rotala roundifolia, I think. And we got some carpeting plants. Uh, is that hair grass? I think it's dwarf hair grass. I should really know this. Really simple and effective scape. You got the leading lines from the uh, hardscape, which is the wood over here. And guess what? This guy's got male antlers in there and ram's horns. Endlers and ram's horns, oh, what a masterpiece. All you need to do to be like the Leonardo da Vinci of the fish tank world to me is <laughs> antlers and <laughs> red ram's horns. No, I can't give this one five out of five, dude. Dark Shadow, I can't do it, man. You know how it is. I, we shouldn't be biased, okay? And like, I'm, I'm in science, so like, I know that bias is the worst. 4.5 out of five, you, you're doing a great job using simple plants and using a nice piece of wood to aquascape your tank and the carpet is very enjoyable as well. Next, next. This tank is sent in by Dimitris Asiat. Oh gosh. Dim Dimitris Siatskas. I think that's also some kind of fancy endler morph. Now there's some artificial stuff in here, but for some reason this little tank um, really stands out to me. Um, although the aquascaping is a little scattered, it kind of works because um, I'm not sure if this is by accident or not, but the scatter looks very natural in a way. The plants are scattered, there's some floating ones, there's some like debris, right? The artificial stuff acts like debris. Now you've got two gourami in there and some guppies. I'm hoping that the gouramis are okay with each other and with the guppies and they're not very nippy, but hopefully everyone is, uh, yeah, acting friendly in this very small tank. You're getting a 3.9 from me. I really like the plants. It's very enjoyable to look at actually. So lots of room to grow. Keep it up. 
Next up, we have Eric Osler. Ooh, I really like the hardscape. There's actually some a little bit of a, a step laddering effect going on. It's really nice. I'm enjoying more and more of the one-sided um, aquascaping. I don't know if you can tell um, from the ratings I've been giving those, but this is another one-sided like corner aquascape. I find them to be, um, for the most part, pretty clever. Those plants are going to carpet well on the nutritious substrate. And then I like the substrate color change divided by the rocks. Really, really clever design. Would like to see some more lushness in the plants. Um, I think they will start to, you know, fill up a little bit. I like how this whole tank is like just for this one short finned beta and an assassin snail or two. 4.2 out of 5, great job. Up next we have Matthew Skinner's tank. Very green, great texture and just an open, no-nonsense fish tank. You got all sorts of fish in here. Um, he's featured a few of them, including the neons and a pleco, but what's really interesting is this twig catfish that he has named Woody. Now the plants are inevitably going to fill out this tank more and more with time. Just a little thing of caution, um, your Anubius and your Java Fern, hopefully you're not burying the rhizomes and only the roots. Um, Java Fern especially, you really want to just let them do its thing or else they're going to rot down and start dying because if their roots are planted, it's going to be trouble. 4.2 out of 5, great job and keep it up. Next tank we have sent in by Redza Ahmad. Nice little cozy tank for your beta. I really like the perspective of this tank. It's really focused on the wood piece, which isn't a bad thing. And it basically fills out the background, even though it's not placed right at the very back of the tank, I imagine. And there's some plants like scattered and rooted in the wood itself in very aesthetically pleasing places. I like the bigger rocks contrasting with your substrate, very fine substrate. Your beta is also really healthy and looks great. The colors are very amazing. I like that you utilized this small space and made it what it is. 4.5 out of 5, great job. Next we have Reed Griffin. Look at that Cory gang, healthy gang of albino Corys. Yeah, don't mess, boy. I think those are glow lights schooling around. Wisteria as your main plant. I think the only plant in here, which still works, you know. Wisteria is great. Just grow them out and let them go wild. The only thing is it's getting a little bit uh, of an algae problem sort of thing. I'm not sure how to deal with that because I'm really not sure about your specs on this tank, but definitely control the light hours. Now for the time being, I'm giving you a 3.8 out of 5, but hopefully when you clean it up, it'll look much better and the wisteria will have grown more into the tank. This tank is sent in by Robert Miller and it's a stunner. I love those lines coming out of the wood piece. I love the choices of your plants. They are contrasting with each other. I, I do suggest doing some vac cleaning on the sand. Um, just, you know, ruffle up the sand and exchange that brown surface with some sand from the bottom. One, it snuffs out algae and two, you know, it, it looks better. Um, keeps the sand looking white. If you keep having this problem, I think decreasing photo hours will be a thing. 4.3 out of 5, great job. And next we have a tank sent in by Peter Van Ruin. It's feeding time for this tank. Now Peter is 13 years old and you're doing a really good job on your aquascape. Just one little advice right off the bat is I see that your gravel is very, very coarse, which means it's um, a bigger size and that's a little bit hard to plant certain plants, right? And also it's not going to retain too much nutrients. It's definitely not a nutrient rich substrate. So plants will struggle in those kind of t conditions. Now you might have some root tabs because I see these plants do have some growth, I think. I don't think it's a completely new tank, so they are surviving, but they will be flourishing much better if you have a nutritious substrate or some sort of food for your plants roots. Anyways, I'll shut up now and enjoy the tank. So there's a little pleco over here, very very cute. There's a rainbow shark over there getting really big, looking very healthy. There's some serpe tetras and a true Siamese algae eater, very good choice, keeping your tank clean. And a side view of the neon tetras and the whole tank. 4.35 out of 5, great job. Fish tank review. Hope Fish for Thought sees this. When you made it onto this subreddit, you know you made it. I'm famous now, mom. What was the reasoning behind this? There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, probably eight, at least seven goldfish in here, sealed tight in a mason jar. Have you not learned anything from Serpa Design? Were you like, wow, uh, ecosphere, let's do it. I'm gonna put goldfish in it. If you can make this into a self-sustaining ecosystem, you might be the 
best aquarist in the world. But chances are they're just gonna die in the next two hours. And then if you leave it, there's gonna be bacteria that's growing and lots of microorganisms. So I guess, yeah, this is one way to start a ecosphere, but at the expense of you going to hell. <laughs> now this is from one of my viewers reacting to getting into one of my slideshows. Yo, y'all see this? Alright, good for that, dude. I made it. I made it. Right here. That's my tank. Oh, dang. That's my tank. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Hold on, I gotta play that scream one more time. Wow. <laughs> Another viewer, Toby Meyer, sent in this amazing drawing. He's only 12 years old, and somehow he got everything on my channel into one picture. This is amazing. At first, I recognized the Cory gang. The sunglasses are sick. You did a really good job with those sunglasses. And then there's ram's horns. There's even endlers in the back. Awesome. And then there's Bap. Time for a boop. And that's Beam. You even got Beam eating the snails. And then there's my logo. There's the Chinese algae eater who doesn't have a job because no one buys them. <laughs> They're horrible fish, don't get them. There's a betta in a vase because FTR. Also a goldfish in a vase, FTR. Fish tats, that's from the last FTR. Man, this guy knows my channel. He's been watching stuff. Walmart fish, good thing they're gonna be gone soon. Mountain Dew tank for the goldfish because of the algae blooms. And then there's me with my bucket and my siphon. Even got my mole. <laughs> The colors on my ten tree snapback and also when my hair gets all puffy. Toby, thank you so much for sending this in. I love it to bits. Alright, we got we got another ecosphere. This one's $390. But hey, you get free shipping from with Prime. How large is extra large? Like that's worth $390. Isn't there gonna be like a danger for it rolling? If it's really big, it doesn't take too much just to tip it over and then it'll start rolling and then everything will just die in your house. But dude, those ratings though, almost 1400 and four stars solid. Bum bum bum. Maybe they're onto something guys. Barn Trooper sent me this uh, picture of someone on Craigslist, old fashioned TV made into a fish tank. I've actually seen Peck Tech do this. If you guys don't know Peck Tech, you're missing out. Go check out his content. And that's some hard liquor right there. <laughs> and an old, fashioned telephone. I don't know if you young bloods even know that that's what a telephone looked like before. There was no buttons, sort of. You had to spin the dial to get to the button. And there's a goldfish in there named Moby Dick. Guy puts goldfish in water bottle with one plant and calls it aquaponics. This looks like this dude went to Hawaii and then came back to like real life and was like, man, I'm missing out. I need to be more Hawaiian. He's probably got a Hawaiian pizza right beside this thing. Face palm to the max, man. This is wrong on so many levels. You got fish dying like crazy at a wedding. And they're not even that good looking. It looks like they got the crappiest minnows that they could find. It's all gray and black. And look at them. They're mostly already dead. You're asking people to swallow and eat dead minnows? These guys don't know what ammonia smell and taste like. Now, I don't know what ammonia tastes like, but I do know that it smells really bad. Like the fish poop and the fish, like if there's a dead fish in your tank for a while, I feel so sorry, man. On top of that, it's gonna be slimy and gross. Yikes. Congratulations on the wedding. Parker Goodwin sent in this uh, picture of their fish tank in a local dentist. This is reminiscent of something. Can't put my finger on it though. But I kind of want to name the blue tang Dory. Looks like a Dory to me. What am I thinking about? Several of my coworkers thought it would be fun to set up a fish tank. It has only been three days and it already looks super nasty. Six goldfish plus one auto in a 10 gallon. Now I don't see a filter. They're your coworkers, right? You gotta tell them you need a filter for this, man. We're you trying to go filterless. That's like some advanced tactical stuff in like the aquarium trade, man. And even harder when there's goldfish involved. When's the last time some professional aquarist tried filterless tanks with goldfish? Even Serpa Design wouldn't do that. Even Fu the Flower Horn would probably not be able. Uh, maybe he would. He's amazing. But yeah, I hate this. It's like, oh, let's do something cool, gang. Uh, we're cool and we like things and we're gonna make this office like spunky. 
I don't know. Sure, but do your research properly. Don't just half-ass it, okay? Oh my god, this dude. <laughs> I don't know, what else can I say? This Asian dude that looks like me who's going like... <laughs> to a fish and then the fish does it back. What else can I say? That speaks for itself, man. <laughs> Continue on. The very small white spots are ick, and he is trying to tell me it's not. So the guy trying to buy the tank and the fish says, No, ick is white spots on a fish, which can kill them if not treated. And the dude with the fish is like, No. And then a face palm. That is their color pattern. Hmm. I don't, I highly doubt it. I can see the small white spots, trust me. I know what it looks like because I have treated it before. Now at this point, this is where your phone is doing you some justice. You can either click I'm interested or is the price negotiable? Click that one. Treat the ick and then you're good. Remember, sometimes ick is on your side. I'm kidding, that's awful. Don't, don't remember that. That's one of the things you should never remember. First up, we have a tank from Andrew Matthews. Um, this is not strictly a fish tank. This is more like a paludarium, which is half terrarium, half aquarium. He's got frogs on the upper half, dry land, and he's got tropical fish on the bottom half. This is super cool, super neat. A lot of work and consideration definitely went into this. It's not all live plants, but hey, it doesn't really matter. This is pretty darn awesome. I've always wanted something like this for myself as well. Maybe in the future, eh? <laughs> I'm giving it 3.75 for the scape, but because of the inner innovation of the paludarium, I'm boosting it up a 0.5, so 3.75 plus 0.5 is 4.25. Next tank is sent in by Brandon Wise. This looks pretty wise. You got the bonsai tree look and then a scattering of hornwort everywhere. There's the Anubias, Marimo moss balls, some frog bit. Pretty cool shrimps too, you got red and blue and they're all hanging out on this tree. Really enjoyable tank. Awesome stuff, dude. Four out of five. Good job. Charles Storm sent in this tank. Why can't my last name be Storm? Instead, my last name is Wang. You don't know how much that got made fun of in high school, okay? <laughs> and even now. <laughs> Anyways, pretty cool tank here. Not many plants, but maybe you'll fill it in a little later. The real star here is your hardscape. That's a pretty nice hardscape, let me tell you that. Plant around that and make it all green and lush. And I'm thinking about your stocking choices. How about some antlers? Four out of five, great job. Oh, jokes, it's because he has an axolotl in here dude that's awesome cute little buddy his eyes are green i didn't know axolotl eyes are green or is that the reflection or are they just green and i didn't know no wonder you kept the plant sparse okay the rank just shot up 0.5 4.5 axolotl tank let's go jordan mitchell a nice looking oko stone right in the middle a good amount of plants i really like the direction this is going i love the centerpiece hardscape and then a lot of scattered plants throughout now jordan says he is hoping to get it heavily planted which i am looking forward to what kind of substrate is that is it gonna be able to support all your heavy plants heavy rooting plants also that midnight black betta with some red in it very fashionable your betta has some style 4.25, keep it up. This tank is sent in by Justin Thomas. He just got paid and then invested in the aquascape for this tank. Awesome stuff. I think this is a fluval flex, right? Yeah, flex that paycheck, bruh. You made such a good decision getting live plants, investing in, you know, what makes you happy. And dude, it's already coming together, man. Everything's gonna carpet. Is that fluval stratum or some other nutrient rich substrate? If it is, yeah, look out, man. All your plants are going to grow more and more. Fluval flex also has a pretty decent light, so don't have to worry about that. Make sure you get that light on a timer, no more than eight hours, I would say. 4.1 out of 5, keep it up. Laura Anderson, she's been in the hobby for 5 months and this is her 75 gallon. Wow, 5 months, pretty new to the hobby and already doing a big big tank. Which is actually pretty good. I, I feel like bigger tanks are easier to maintain, but harder to set up I would say. But this is truly something really nice. You definitely looked at a lot of aquascapes before, didn't you? And you didn't skimp on the resources. Those stones do probably cost a fortune. And also getting enough nutrient rich substrate to fill out the bottom but hey that's dedication right there okay and you're working with the rule of thirds the aquascape proportions are beautiful now what do you plan to put in it i'm super curious let me know 4.8 out of 5. next tank sent in by nicola luis cute little simple desktop tank nothing to complain about you got the little aloe vera and the cactus beside it adding to the theme of a desktop tank 
what else can you ask for? You got the iconic like desktop tank, big rounded gravel. You got the beta, of course. Very good decision. Really glad it's not like goldfish <laughs> or like a battle shark in there. I don't know. People just get fish, okay? They don't care, but obviously you care. And you got live plants as well. Very nice. Plus ones all around, man. Love that your beta is a short fin as well. No problems swimming and staying healthy throughout its whole life. Really good decisions over here. Also the almond leaves, 4 out of 5 for simply doing everything so right. And hey, not a speck of algae. Respect, dude. This is from Rafael Zarsoza, 3 months into the hobby. Man, you new beginner introductory people, you don't waste no time trying to get all fancy with the aquascape, dude. I see you guys. And look at the stocking choices here, 3 brilliantly white angelfish. You got Garamis, you got the red-tailed shark, bam. Colors are popping everywhere. You even got German blue ram. Man, I'm jealous of this tank. Look at that substrate split by the larger rocks. Nutritious substrate, both sides, planted. Just a bit of an algae problem, but I'm sure you're gonna be on top of that in no time. 4.65 out of five. Next tank sent in by Seth Ugecho. This is their red ear slider tank. The tank doesn't look that big for them. I think I've heard like crazy size tanks to keep these guys in or like ponds so yeah i'm not sure about that but for now the turtles are like a good size for it it doesn't seem like they're being overcrowded and you did a wonderful job with the decorations i'm just assuming that with turtles you can't really keep life plans but that didn't stop you from trying to make it look good and i bet you get a lot of compliments 4.25 out of 5 keep it up fish tank review can you say it can you say that fish tank review say it Fashi doesn't want to talk right now. She's uh, not very tired of right now. My local zoo. There are about 15 wild fish in there. Man, what kind of zoo is this? I've been to a few zoos in my life and haven't seen anything um, like that in a zoo before. Is that duct tape? This is so ghetto. This is like zoo in where? Detroit? Is this like hood zoo? I'm pretty sure that's a picnic table and wild fish, were they just caught by the lake? There's no filter or anything, it's just a uh, air line that's pumping out some bubbles. I mean, that's better than nothing, but <laughs> not by much. And you said there's 15 in there? In the comments though, um, there was some mentioning about how this wasn't actually a zoo, and instead it was like a shelter for animals without homes. I don't know, if you know anything about this, let me know. Help me confirm. But yeah, can you just imagine if it was actually in a zoo? Imagine paying like 15 to 20 dollars going in and then seeing this. WTF? Incompatible tank mates in tight quarters. Just playing. This is not gonna go well. Oh shoot, oh it's, oh. It's getting pinched, I'm pretty sure. How's that crab still alive? It's still alive. It's like, oh, I'm getting the hell out of here now. Yeah, um, incompatible, yes. Just playing? No. Unless their version of just playing is like the same as if a lion was hunting down a wildebeest in the savanna and then the whole lion, what's it called? Pride, the whole pride of lions starts eating the wildebeest that's if that's just playing previous owner abandons aquarium with two live fish and overfilled amount of food now i've seen a lot of random chairs and drawers and stuff sofas laying on lawns or like in front of someone's house property um, obviously they threw it out and it's for free you can take it i've never seen a okay no i've seen fish tanks for free as well because i I think like a few of mine were free. Um, not the flu one, didn't find that just outside, but my 20 gallon, which is right there actually, that was free, that was outside someone's house. But have never seen a fish tank still with fish. And uh, not to mention, look at the amount of food on top. What in the world? Th that's like, <laughs> that is disgusting and it's gonna kill that fish even faster. No filter, no heater, just left outside. Who knows how cold the temperature is there at night. And at least have the decency to give more water. Like, it's all the way down the bottom. But why are we even talking about any of that? Look at the amount of food. Again, what the hell? I think I figured it out. I think because they're uh, giving the fish away for free, they just decided to dump all the remaining food they had into the tank. Like, eat up, buddy. It might be a while before someone picks you up. So eat up. Don't want you to starve. Don't worry, it won't be starving. That's not how it'll die. Adding a fish to a Lego aquarium and teaching 500,000 people that this is okay. 
Monster Mike Fishing, 789,000 subscribers. World's best mini Lego aquarium with live fish. Real. I wish it wasn't real. This is what I wish was actually clickbait for once. If that isn't the world's tiniest aquarium, guys, this isn't a competition, okay? You don't you don't compete to see who can abuse fish more. Now I'm pretty sure they put it in there and then took it out. One of the comments said that. It's like they put it in there and took it out. Like it was to defend Monster Mike fishing. But dude, he's got monster in his name. Especially if he does this to show his viewers, and I'm pretty sure most of them are very young, that this is okay. And many people have Lego and many people will get this and put fish in it. Um I don't know, just for fun even, that still stresses the fish out. And some of them, maybe a handful, will just keep fish in that little thing. This is not okay, guys. Why does he have so many subscribers and views? I'm, I'm jealous. But don't worry, folks, I'm never selling out like that. Fancy goldfish in drums? That is very colorful, but I don't see any goldfish. I see fish that are very vividly colored, like it's supposed to be salt water. I don't see no goldfish here, man. But I'm gonna trust your word for it. Sure, it's goldfish. Just hope that these drums are not being played. If it's not obvious enough, the amount of vibrations um, in a drum is so compact, it's crazy to have anything living in it while you're playing it. It actually doesn't look like it's still being used. It looks purely for display. But what gets to me is, is this. The guy who made it said, goldfish are perfect because they only need aeration and have adapted to smaller spaces. Again, different definitions, I guess. If you think adapt means being forced into something, so like you thinking child labor is okay because the children have adapted to working when they're 12, sure, that they've adapted. But again, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that's the definition of adapt. I think there should be a biological change to make it okay for that fish to be in small spaces. If they've truly adapted, I don't think this would be on the bad section of a fish tank review video. Now, next one is a little bit of a super meme over here. Hey guys, look at my cool new goldfish. Wouldn't it be funny if it could live for five to 10 years, grow six plus inches long, and have a memory of over five months and need a filtered tank of 20 to 40 gallons? I mean, that would just be ridiculous. Now, yeah, this is a super cringy, cheesy meme, but this is like how I feel working at the pet store when someone comes in and like, hi, hi, excuse me, can I get a goldfish? And I'm like, how big is your tank? Oh, we're getting the bowl over there. That's every time I, I wish actually I could like hold a version of this meme up and be like, just read this, please reconsider. Found this in Pinterest. Apparently this is supposed to be aesthetic, not even close, this is horrible. Yeah, um, might be a Valentine's Day thing. Let me tell you now, if whoever you're interested in does this, run. And if you find this attractive, well, hope you two are happy together. I'm running, peace, peace. I really hope this is fake. Yeah, me too. Aliens, we should check Earth for intelligent forms of life. Earth, a bowl of Hennessy for my new goldfish. That guy's so stoned, he, he's starting to look like an alien, man. And honestly, I don't know how that fish is still alive. It's probably been in there for like, maybe two minutes, two seconds, I don't know. Can it even last a minute in, in alcohol like that? Man, that poor fish. At least it's going out drunk AF probably can't feel a thing anymore. Yeah, no wonder aliens never bother to visit. Or, or did they? Area 51, I'll be there. I had a yes, 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 no moment at the pet store earlier. Um, haven't read all of it, but I'm pretty sure it's like, yes, 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 no, as in good, 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 bad. Why do fish do bad in a bowl? You can't control the heat. Yep, there's no good filtration. Yep, uh, fish do not like their water being changed all the time. Yeah, that's also true. And then here comes the no. There is one fish that can handle most of the above. That fish is called a betta. <laughs> Why, man? Why? No, get out of here. Again, bettas have not adapted to nothing. We just decided that for them. Might as well just get them to do child labor. I'm sorry, that's not something to laugh at. Child labor is freaking disgusting. 
every child deserves a childhood. Like if I didn't have a childhood, I wouldn't be like into SpongeBob memes right now. Welcome to our family, little ones. Not gonna be part of your family for long. <laughs> Love this guy. What is this? Posted by Sexman21. <laughs> Definitely something that someone like with that username would say. What a savage. And yeah, he's right. That one looks like it's gone already. The other one looks like it wants to be gone. This looks like something that a mom would do. Moms, I see you. Do your research properly, okay? And to those who do their research properly, you have a lot to deal with, with your kids and everything. Still doing your research properly. That's amazing. Our first tank is sent in by Deep Shubra from India. Got a nice carpet going on, nice little group of neon tetras, some rasporas and black neons, and I'm not sure what that fish is. I like the understocking and I like the live plants. There's also a catchment for the duckweed up top and these gorgeous pictures of the shrimp in the tank. And then this alternative angle. Really lovely tank, I like that it's rimless. Such a clean look. Everything is going very right for this tank. We're starting off strong, 4.75, let's go. Oh, and can I just add that he's not using any CO2 for this? Next tank from Ken Lemuel. Right off the bat, what catches my eye is that this tank is dirted, or at least I'm Pretty sure it's dirted, it might be some other nutrient rich substrate, but it could also be organic potting mix. And it's capped by what looks to be sand. It's another nice rimless, got a powerful light up top, and all the plants are growing really well. I think that's Dwarf Sag doing the carpeting. Anubius everywhere, amazing. And then the Crips in the back growing large. Dwarf Sag, Anubius, and Crips. There's also that Tiger Lotus. The Lemon Tetras are getting pretty big. One Garami in there, I think that's a Cardinal. That might be a hatchet fish, I'm not sure. Anyways, awesome tank, super cool. I love the placement of the plants and the uh, little bits of hardscape here and there. Very lush. This definitely looks like an aged and balanced tank. I can't see any algae from here. Five out of five. Whew, let's go. Here's a tank from Michaela Nichols, sporting a super bright white substrate. The only thing is, I hope you have some substrate fertilizers like root tabs for those big sorts that are gonna get big and consume a lot of nutrient. Doesn't look like it's dirted, but you know, if you dirted it correctly, I wouldn't be able to tell anyway, so maybe it is dirted, who knows. Stocked with emerald quarries, ember tetras, and honey gourami. Four out of five, keep it up. Here's a tank from Molly Nicholson. She's a 13-year-old aspiring aquarist and convinced dad to let her aquascape. I don't think you have to ever convince him anymore. This is a sick aquascape. There's a few plants I'm not sure of actually. Um, that one and the one in the very back. Not sure what those plants are. It almost looks a little artificial to me, which I guess is fine. Like, it still looks pretty natural. I mean, you do have the live plants all around this tank. I really like how you filled out the height of the tank. It's not a shallow tank at all, and you've made good work out of it with that hardscape. And then you mossed it up, very nice. Carpeting plants starting to do its thing. Every corner of the tank is being used up by fish. Oh, there's even Congo Tetras in here. And seeing how you are 13 and you had to actually convince your dad to let you do this. Your dad should be convincing you to aquascape all their tanks from now on. 4.9 out of 5. Let's go. Here's an island effect tank sent in by Rosie Wright all the way from Australia. Good day, mate. Every single time I hear the word Australia. Good day, mate. I'm sorry if that's coming off racist. I really don't mean to be racist. Don't mind me. I'm just a Chinese guy living in Canada making fun of an Australian accent. <laughs> Anyways, I'm getting derailed from this awesome looking tank. Man, if this isn't impressive. Anytime there's an island aquascape, I'm down and let me tell you it might look like an easy aquascape to do But yeah, the amount of consideration that went into this definitely a lot She might have had to even use super glue and then plant around very meticulously five out of five Next we have a tank sent in by spooky noodle three goldies in a 65 gallon with three goldfish All you need is 40 gallons yet you have 65 going that extra mile. You're even trying out the live plants I respect that 4.1 out of 5 if not anything, just for doing it correctly. This next tank is sent in by Tarek from Bosnia and Herzegovina. Man, I don't even know where that is. Actually, I searched it up and it's somewhere close to Italy. I've heard of Bosnia, but I didn't know it was actually Bosnia and Herzegovina. Tarek, I'm pretty sure you're being very resourceful. You have chosen a simple substrate and these rocks are probably just foraged around your area, yet they look very nice together and you've made the aquascape look super good, just with the simple things that you could forage. And the plants are very non-demanding, so that light 
is just doing work. This tank is super simple, it's got a clean look, and it works. And I'm sure it didn't cost a fortune either, because smart, resourceful guy, Tarek. Loving the school of cardinals and that beta. There's some other fishies over there in the corner, and here is another perspective. Those cardinals are getting pretty huge. 4.5 for such a resourceful and simple scape. Tetra, 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 we in a spot, coming in hot, ventral fin dot, acclimate that. With my shoal at, cure my fin rod from Karasiformis to Parachirodon, hold on. There's not another fish that you can wish for, live fam says I finna one. I finna gone three days without furt, I'm an addict, like fanatic, I'm a baddest, no tabs, only dirt. My Cory gang so loyal, black. Tetra go skirt, we came to play, came to silence, gang.